Good morning, King's Church, and hello. It is so amazing to get to be together online. My name is Nathan. My name is Michelle. And we go to King's Salford. But it doesn't stop there. We have six other fabulous locations. Which are? So, we have Bolton, we have Wigan, we have Blackpool, we have Persian, we have Gateshead, and we have our very own Salford. Woohoo, Salford. For those of you who are new today, I'd just love to say hello and welcome. But please don't just stop there. Get onto our webpage and get connected because we would love to meet you. I can't express that enough. We would love to meet you. We are so excited that you are here with us this morning. So why don't you give our page a share and a like and or you comment in the comment boxes. Yeah. Just share the page with your world, with your friends and with your family. Mm, that's it. Let's share the love of God. I always believe that it's so important to come with an expecting heart, to come to the, to the throne room of God with that expectation. What are our expectations? What are your expectations? What are you expecting for? What are you waiting for? What are you praying for? What are you believing in? Let's bring those expectations. So before we enter the preach, before we enter the worship, let's all come with an expectation. Yeah, we hope that you have an amazing morning this morning and we just thank you for being with us this morning. We just thank you guys for just connecting with us. So just hit that share button, hit that like button. Yeah, and we'd just like to say, guys, we love you, we miss you. We cannot wait for the day when we all get to be together again and just have such great hugs and love and share each other's company. So we'd just like to say from us, we'll see you soon. Bye.
promise your buried body began to breathe out of the silence the roaring lion declared the brave has no claim on me then came the morning that sealed the
Good morning, church. It's great to see you this morning. And what a great time of worship together. I want to read you something from scripture to set this day up. It's going to be a great day together as church across all our locations. I want to read you this verse from Romans 5, verse 8, one of my favourite verses in scripture. And it says this, But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. You know, there's a myth that in order to come to God, you've got to get yourself right. You've got to clean yourself up. You've got to put your things in order. You've got to get yourself presented and then you can come to God. It's a bit like when you go to the dentist and before you get there to have your teeth cleaned, you brush your teeth. Why do we do that? Do you do that? Because I do that every time. It's a bit like when you are stacking the dishwasher, you wash the plates before you put them in the dishwasher. I know I'm guilty of that too, but why do I do that? God says, no, no, you don't have to clean yourself up in order to come to me. You know, the very thing that provoked God to send Jesus to the cross was love. The very first word that God uses to describe himself in scripture is compassionate that while we were still sinners, while we were messed up, while we didn't have our things in order, while we were full of sin, God chose to send Jesus. Jesus came out of love that while we were still sinners, he died for us. And we take great confidence in that. So today, whether you're sitting in your pajamas or whether you are dressed and ready to go out or whether you're watching this a different time in the day, let's take comfort in the fact that today we come as we are. We don't have to put on pretense. We don't have to get ourselves in order. We don't have to pretend we're clean. God has cleaned us from the inside out and he wants us to come to him just as we are. So we're going to pray today in faith, declaring over today God's goodness, God's love. And we're going to invite you to pray with us this morning. So why don't you leave us, Suze? Yeah, Father God, this morning we want to thank you so much that you knew that we needed you before we knew that we needed you and I thank you for your love today I thank you for your goodness today and I thank you that we can just come as we are yeah. God this morning as a church we come with any brokenness we may have we come with any hurt we may have God we come with any doubts that we may have any insecurity or any rejection God we come as we are we don't need to pretend to be something we're not before you so we just come as we are this morning and I thank you that you are continually changing us from glory to glory and that that happens every time we meet together even in our homes God as we just um, press in and listen to your word you are changing us from glory to glory so I just thank you that we are accepted as we are today by you in the mighty name of Jesus Amen 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 we want to say a big welcome to you as well if you're new to Kings we give you a warm welcome to church online this morning. Yeah. We're one church in six locations all over the northwest of England this morning. There are people tuning into this service and it's our privilege and honour to welcome you to our church today. We'd love to get to know you more. If you can connect with us, tell us where you come from and how we can help you. We would love to support you. Yeah. We're middle of summer as well. And uh, hopefully today the sun is shining bright wherever you're sitting and uh, you're getting time to rest and relax sometime over the summer. And we're hoping as well to get away, aren't we, on our holidays? Not yes. to Spain, unfortunately. We were planning to go away to Spain, but it was cancelled. So we're holidaying in the UK instead. Yeah, well, a lot of people um, we've heard have had to cancel holidays this year. Um, and so we hope that you're still managing to get together over summer and just connect with some people as much as we can yeah. uh, with certain restrictions that have been and are in place. Uh, but yeah, this morning, maybe you couldn't go abroad this year. Uh, maybe you didn't manage to get away. So what we thought this morning, we will bring Spain to you and we are going to head over to some friends of ours, um, Anne and Steve Laidlow. Um, Anne used to be the pastor at our Black pool campus and so this morning we're going to head over to Spain as they lead us in our giving this morning. Good morning King's Church. Good it's morning. Great. It's great for us to be with our King's family this morning. I'm Anne and this is Steve Laidlow. I used to be pastor at, at Blackpool campus uh, which I pioneered. I was there for about five years and Steve's been a missionary for how long? Uh, too long, yeah. I don't want to give my age away, but almost 25 years traveling around the world and spent about 14 years living in different countries like Singapore and Japan and 10 years 
in Indonesia as well, yeah. Wow, I tell you what, <laughs> and now we're missionaries to South and Southeast Asia and so much further than that. Since lockdown, we've been able to reach people in all different countries that's and right. in different languages with all the different things that we do. So that's amazing. And you know, the wonderful thing is that God wants to use us wherever we are doing Amen. whatever. He has a plan for us. Amen. And we just want to share a scripture that's on our hearts. Yeah, you, I'm sure everybody knows this, so we don't need to open our Bible. But it says in Jeremiah, 29 verse 11 for I know the plans I have for you says the Lord plans to prosper you and not to harm you God is a good God and you might think well I don't know if God can use me but I want to tell you that God can use you right where you are mm. Absolutely. And for me, I remember when I first became a Christian, I was a beauty therapist and, you know, God used me right there in the salon. Everybody that came in, I got a chance to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Many people became Christians, people got healed. And there's loads of stories in the Bible of different people that God used. You know, Gideon, for instance, you know, he said, you know, who am I? I'm the weakest of all the clan and uh, how can God use me? But he became a valiant leader, amazing. What about others, Steve? Amen, there's others like Moses mm. was a stu stutterer, yeah, <laughs> who became a deliverer, yeah. 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 Aaron was a yeah. servant who became yeah. God's spokesman. Mm. Yeah. David was a mm. shepherd boy who became a king. And Joseph was mm. a, pris a prisoner yeah. who became prime minister. You know, I want to encourage you today. Mm. You don't need mm. to do anything mm. more for God. Yeah. You don't need to listen yeah. to a, another uh, uh, how can I say, what do you call them, podcast, podcast or yeah. a CD yeah. or something that you don't even need to attend yeah. another church service or read another paperback book or mm. listen to, so you, you don't yeah. have to do anything yet. You don't even have to attend another church service mm. before, before God yeah, will begin yeah. to make use of you. Yeah. All he's looking yeah. for mm. is willing yeah. and obedient. Yeah vessels, mm. not brimming vessels, mm. not yeah. people who are full of the word of God, but he's yeah. looking for people who yeah. are willing. And the, mm. the scripture says in 2 Chronicles 16 mm. verse 9, yeah. it says, for the eyes of the Lord search throughout the earth, mm. looking for people yeah. who are fully committed to him. And guess what? The result yeah. of that, the benefit, of it says he will strengthen yeah. those people. Wow. I don't know about you, yeah. but I want to be strong yeah. in the Lord. Amen. And the power of his mind. Amen. I like to think God is looking for fat people, faithful, available, and teachable people. Let us be faithful in all areas of our, of our giving, of our time, our talent, and our treasure. We've loved being with you this morning. Amen. And I'm sure you'll hear from us again. And we're just going to hand over to the leader of the meeting. God bless you all. God bless you. Bye, Bye for now. Ciao. Ciao. Thank you, Anne and Steve, for that short import. It was great to hear from you. We do miss you lots and we hope you're settling into Spain really well. Uh, we're gonna show you a, a short giving video in a minute about how to give at King's, and we're gonna worship together, and then we're gonna introduce our speaker. Who's speaking this morning? Yeah, very excited this morning, because we have got this morning our very own uh, Tina Crossley, who is from Bolton Campus, and she oversees all of 0 to 18s across King's with her husband, Steve. And uh, yeah, we have the privilege of doing life up close with Tina, and we really, really wanna recommend this morning that you because there's gold in this woman and she has incredible things to share so we're really excited this morning that shortly we're going to get to hear Tina speak make sure your hearts are open and you're ready to receive whatever God wants to say to you today hey it's great that you've joined us for our online service during each of our online services there will be an opportunity to give to God if you are watching church on a TV, then you can simply scan the QR code on the screen with your smartphone to be taken to the giving page on our website. If you're watching from a mobile phone, a tablet or a computer, you will see a link in the chat that will take you to the same place. When you arrive at the giving page, scroll down to find a button saying Give Online. This will direct you to a form where you can submit your details to give. The first section on this form says my donations are for. Click the drop down menu and select the campus you are giving to today. The next part of the form gives you two options to donate regularly or to give a one off donation. 
This is a great time to consider setting up a regular donation online if you usually give weekly in a bucket at one of our campuses. You can do that simply by filling in this section on the form. Alternatively, to give a one-off donation, type in your amount here. Following on from that, you have the gift aid section. If you are a UK taxpayer, select the checkbox and fill in your email address below. When that's done, it's a case of following the remaining instructions to complete the process. We want to thank you for your continued generosity as we gather together for King's Church Online.
to be with you this Sunday and an absolute privilege to be, op be able to open God's word with you. Um, I don't know about you but I have loved seeing the power of the church during this time. There's been certain times in my life that um, I've just seen the beauty of the church again with fresh eyes and for me lockdown has really been a time like that. Uh, just seeing the church step up and draw closer and in a time when the rest of the world seems to be on pause in many ways and um, shops can be closed and gyms can be put on hold and, and all other areas can be put on pause, that nothing can stop the church. And I have just loved seeing the church in action during this time. I don't know what um, this time has been like for you, but I think that term of having a pause on things has been so true, hasn't it? It's, there's been a pause put on many things, not on life itself. You'll know as much as I do. I have three children. Life does not pause. Busyness continues. Workloads continues. I know many of us have had to work incredibly hard during this time around all the restrictions, but there certainly has been a pause button that has been pressed on many areas of our lives. Um, but that's actually an area where I've found a lot of beauty during this time. While we've not been able to get out as we normally would, I found that we were able to get out into just creation a little bit more. And I am, as I'm getting a little bit older, becoming a little bit of a garden geek. And, um, and I have loved getting out into my garden more. I've loved being able to go for long walks um, into places we've never seen. And I know that uh, a few of you that have been on social media, you've discovered places that have been right on your doorstep that you've never seen before and you've just loved that together. And I think that has been really, really beautiful during this time. And for me, you know, in the first kind of month within lockdown, I just kept being reminded of this passage that is found in Genesis. It's actually in Genesis chapter three, verse eight. And it talks about the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Um, and I, I came to thinking about this morning um, and I thought, man, if I could pull a preach together that really is summing up the heart of how do we walk in the garden, in the cool of the day with God, I thought, I am going to get everyone buying into wanting to listen to that preach. Man, I would even want to listen to it again just to check that I've got it all right, that I know about how I can live at that pace of life. Um, but the reality is that that's a little bit of a trap we can fall into. If we just take one verse out of the Bible and focus on it out of context, we can take a verse and totally do disservice to the church because the reality is we cannot walk in the cool of the day, in the garden for the rest of our lives. That pace is not a reality. We know that life goes up and down and there's highs and there's low and no sooner do you read a verse like that in Genesis than you can get to a passage in Matthew where you find Peter being called to walk to Jesus out on the water. Um, and I read a passage like that and I realise that is the complete opposite feelings that you would have if you was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And I'm just going to read some words to you that's actually found in that passage when uh, Jesus calls Matthew, uh, Peter to walk out to him on the water. And it's found in Matthew and it says that he actually became terrified. It says that he became fearful, that there were winds coming at him from every direction, that he then actually began to sink. 
he got to a point where he was crying out to God and it actually says he was doubting. Now, who knows? That is also a very true picture of our lives, that we can find ourselves in situations where we're terrified and fearful, where we feel like actually we're beginning to sink. We can't keep up with life anymore and and we can be crying out and doubting where God is. And actually, the reality is this morning, I can't speak to you about how to walk in the garden in the cool of the day with God all the time. But actually, it's the power in how to walk with God through it all. Whether you're walking with God and you feel like you're in a time in your life that you feel that cool of the day, or whether you're walking in a time where you feel like you are sinking, the power is actually held in the walking with God through it all. And there, as I just said, there is huge highs and lows in our life. And as mentioned before, I am becoming a little bit of a garden geek. I've just turned 33 during lockdown. Some days I feel like I'm 33 going on 88. Um, That is a reality for me. I'm just loving being in the garden. Actually, I'll let you into a little bit of a secret. During lockdown, me and a few of our friends have actually created, I know you're going to mock me for this, I don't know why I'm admitting it, we've created our very own gardening club. (laughs) That is right, we are that mad about gardening. But listen, I've been getting into my garden more and more and just realising that that in itself is just a picture of our life. There is so many events that go on and hand in hand with that so many emotions that is almost a mirror image of our lives you've got new life and you've got death you've got excitement you've got disappointment you've got contentment but you've got comparison and that in itself can be a real picture of our lives but i am encouraged by a verse that is found in james 1 21 i'm going to read it to you Um, And it is in the paraphrase um, of the message. I do love reading from the message. Um, And it says, in simple humility, let our gardener, God, landscape you with the word, making a salvation garden from your life. In simple humility, let our gardener, God, landscape you with the word, making a salvation garden from your life. And I just think all of those highs and all of those lows, the whole walk, not just a glimpse of the days that feel good, but the days that feel good, the days that feel bad. If we put that into the hands of our gardener and we meditate on his word day and night, as the Psalms would tell us, and we allow God to sculpt our life, then it's there that it's all worked into this beautiful picture called walking with God. It isn't about an isolated time. It isn't about looking for those highs. It's not about attaining this lifestyle where we feel like that's what it looks like to be a Christian but actually it's walking with God through it all. This morning I want us to focus on a passage that is in Romans 1 verse 20. Again I'm just going to read it to you this morning and this is the passage that we're going to unpack this morning. Again I would encourage you to go and read the whole of Romans chapter one. But for this morning, I'm just going to pick out this one verse. Um, So it's verse 20 and it says, For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and his divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made around us so that people are without excuse. So the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and his divine nature has been clearly seen so that people are without excuse. And this morning, that is what I want to preach from. I want to preach about God's divine nature and how in essence, if if our life is often a mirror image to what can happen in creation and what can happen in the garden, these highs and these lows, that actually what is God's hidden qualities about his divine nature that we see within that? Because I'm telling you, there is some beautiful qualities that you can have so much going on around you, but if you, the, the message version actually says, if you take a long and thoughtful look at creation, it's there that you see God's invisible qualities, his divine nature, and it's there that things begin to change your life. So I've got three things this morning about God's divine nature that we are going to unpack together. And the first one is this. God is sovereign despite our circumstances. 
God is sovereign despite our circumstances. If we go back to the picture of those two passages that I spoke about at the beginning, walking in the garden in the cool of the day versus walking out to Jesus on the water where you begin to fear, be fearful and doubt and sink, I think it would possibly be very easy for me to say that it's easier to see God being sovereign and being in control when you feel like you are walking in that garden in the cool of the day. It's, it's easier to feel like, you know what, God's got this. Because my circumstances are good, because everything's fine, God's clearly in control. The reality is God is always in control even in the days when you begin to feel like you are sinking. Jesus was with Peter that day and he was as in control. He could have spoken and the winds would have stopped. He, he has got the ability to do all things that we begin to think that when things are not going as we would hope them to, that actually God's so, uh, sovereignty is in question. It's never in question. Our God is always, always in control. I'm going to keep uh, giving you examples this morning from my garden because, like I said with that verse, I really do believe that his divine nature is shown through creation. Um, and I've loved growing sunflowers. Some of you may have seen I did a little sunflower competition in my garden. Um, and actually, I've, I'm quite competitive as well. I, w I was in the lead for quite a while. And then this one pesky night... We, uh, we had horrible winds and this wind blew over my sunflower and uh, it absolutely snapped in the middle. It snapped so much it was hanging on by a thread and I went out to it the next morning and we were all gutted. In fact, I was probably more gutted than anyone else in my family. They just pretend to enjoy it, I'm sure. Um, but I, I didn't think that I could do anything else other than I'm just going to have to cut it off. I'll maybe pop it in a vase and see if it'll still flower. There was no sign of a flower up until that point. And I cut it off, put it in the vase. And sure enough, within a few days, it had absolutely died a death. There was no bringing the sunflower back. It didn't flower. Um, and I was telling one of my friends on our gardening WhatsApp club. And, uh, and she sent me a video and she said, oh, man. If only you would have known, if you would have taped it back up and wrapped a little bit of strengthening around it, then actually the sunflower would have completely rehealed itself. It would have rejoined and it would have carried on. It might have looked a little bit different, but it still would have done what it was created to do. And you know, for me, that is a picture of the need for us to remain planted. If you've gone through a time where you are feeling like, what on earth is going on? How, how is our God even in control? Look at the circumstances that are going on around us. You might be tempted, like I'm sure many of us have been before, to just go, do you know what? I'm cutting that off. Sack it. I cannot see you in this. God, where were you? And you could give up and you could go and try and find life in something else. But you know, God wants to say to you this morning, if that is you, if you are in that place and you're beginning to question if God is in control, he says to you this morning, remain planted, remain planted. That verse that I shared with you before in James, and I shared it from the message version, the NIV actually says about the word being planted in you, the power of being planted. If you remain planted, then it is then that you will see that God is in control. Despite the circumstances that go on around you, he will bring everything into God. He's always in control despite your circumstances. That's number one. Number two this morning, number two is God is faithful despite our circumstances. Again, if we go back to those two examples that we shared, so a Genesis, walking in the garden, the cool of the day, and then walking out to Peter, uh, walking out to Jesus on the boat. I'm sure like me, you will think it is far easier to feel like God is faithfully with you 
when you feel like you are walking in the garden in the cool of the day compared to the moments where you feel terrified, you're beginning to sink and you're probably beginning to feel a little bit abandoned. You're beginning to think, God, where are you? Jesus, where are you in all of this? I'm sinking. If you are with me, if I'm walking out to you, how are you not helping me? <clears throat> and actually we can begin to uh, create this picture in our mind that maybe God's real, but maybe he's just a distant God. Maybe from across that water, maybe G uh, Peter began to feel like uh, Jesus is there, but you know what? He's just distant. He's not faithfully with me as I thought. You know, the reality is we know because we know the end of the, of the stories that God and Jesus is faithfully with you through it all through the good times the bad times and if that is you this morning and you're beginning to have any form of doubt whether God is with you let me remind you this morning from the word of God from the truth of creation around us that God is faithfully with you <clears throat> you know back to my sunflowers I am um, <clears throat> excuse me I had um this one sunflower and it was beginning to die off. Now my friend on my WhatsApp group, um, it's not just me and one friend, there's a few of us. We're not just two sad us together. <laughs> um, she was uh, talking about, oh, make sure you save all the seeds and you can you can share them for the rest of us So uh, next year. So this one sunflower had died off and uh, well, the flowers had kind of wilted around it. And so I cut the top off it. There was a few more coming, so I thought I'll leave those ones on. And I, I rushed and I took it inside and we do these little films for each other. And I filmed, filmed it for the girls, showing them me taking the seeds out. And you know, the seeds actually came out white and I thought, oh, I wonder if it's a different type of seed. And I, and I then went to Google my trusty source and it was there that it showed me that I'd cut it off too early. You wasn't supposed to cut it off that early. And um, you know that actually what you're supposed to do with a sunflower is you're supposed to leave it until it is dying a death that is beyond, it looks like it's dying. You're supposed to leave it until it's so wilted and it's so black in itself that you wouldn't even think that anything healthy can come from it. And if God wants to speak to us through creation, which I believe that he does, that his divine nature is shown to us through his very creation that he's made. I think that's a picture this morning, that on the days where you feel like God has abandoned you, on the days where you feel like your gardener is distant, that you feel like that you're actually stagnant, you're going nowhere, you're in the dark. Maybe this morning you're not where you wanna be. Maybe there's a situation going on that you never wish that you would have been in. It's not how you want it to look. Let me tell you, maybe it is that God is faithfully with you, creating in you seeds that are gonna be replenished in the future, that are gonna bring goodness to your future. Maybe it's maybe that it's just God's with you and it's not how you look. Let me remind you this morning, church, God is faithfully with you through everything. He's never left you, he's with you in the highs and he's with you in the lows. Number three this morning, God is gracious despite our circumstances. Again, looking at those two stories, how much easier is it to see God's grace in our lives when we are walking with him every day? I don't know about you, but there's something in my mind that I just think if I'm walking with God every day, if I'm setting my alarm early and I'm getting up and I'm reading and I'm being in his presence, something in you that feels like God's, God's with me, he's proud and, and I've got his grace. and. And then the times when maybe life is hurried, maybe you've not opened your Bible for a while, maybe you, you have lost your passion to be involved within church and, and to be involved within your walk with God. And maybe you begin to feel like, I don't deserve God's grace. Maybe your circumstances are crying out, you don't deserve God's grace we know the truth this morning. We know that God is gracious despite our circumstances. He is with you in the days where you are walking with him every single day and you feel rooted and planted in the word. You're finding time for worship. You're finding time to be serving above and beyond. And But listen, he's also with you in the days where you have felt distant. 
our God, he sent Jesus to die on the cross so that it wouldn't be about your efforts anymore, that it wouldn't be about us abiding by these rules. Actually, Jesus came to fulfill the law so that you would have all of his grace despite your efforts, despite your circumstances. Back to my sunflower um, this morning. I, like I mentioned before, we did a sunflower competition on our street and I'd done, I think it was maybe a tray of 10 sunflowers and I just wanted to get them to roughly about this size until I went and handed them out to the neighbors so that they um, were started off enough for them to look after them. Um, but I was really annoyed because, of course, I wanted to do it for all of my neighbors and the ones that I told them that I was giving, uh, giving them to. It meant that there was one sunflower pot and it hadn't shot up. And I thought, man, I can't join in the competition now. And I, you know me, if, if you do know me, I am so competitive. But I was, I was very gracious and humble myself. And I was like, my neighbors can have all these. So I went and dropped them off to them. And I totally forgot about this one pot with this one seed in and I left it. I didn't do anything with it. And I, I watched the neighbors as they began theirs. And I kid you not, maybe a week, two weeks later, this one sunflower that I had not tended to, I had not looked after, I had not watered, it shot a green shoot. It showed its green shoot. And I think this morning, dare I say it, that God's divine nature is hidden in his creation. That is what the word says, that that is an image of what God does for us that it's not about your effort, it's not about how much you do, that then you see God's grace in your life. He is as much with you and for you and has grace to pour on your life despite the efforts that you do. It's a picture of the beauty of the cross this morning. I want to ask you one question as I come to land this morning. A little bit further on in the passage um, in Romans, it's Romans 1 but this time verse 25 and it talks about how the people had exchanged the truth about God for a lie and I want to ask you that question this morning church. I want to ask you, have you exchanged the truth for a lie about any of those things? Have you began to believe in your mind that through your circumstances, through the situation that you find yourself in right now, that God isn't in control, that God isn't with you, and that God's grace is not sufficient for you? Have you exchanged that truth for a lie this morning? Because if you have, then I wanna let you know that God is always in control. God is with you. On your worst days, he has remained with you through everything and that God's grace is sufficient for you despite your efforts this morning. All you need to do is bring it back to God to remain planted in him and walk through the good days where you feel that um, that walking in the garden in the cool of the day to the bad days where you feel like you're sinking. Continue to walk with him and it is there that you will find the goodness of God, the sovereignty of God, the faithfulness of God and the grace of God. I'm just going to pray for us this morning, church, um, and then I'm going to hand back to our hosts. God, I want to pray over every person that is listening um, to the sound of my voice this morning. God, I want to pray for every Christian that has committed their lives to you that no matter what their circumstances are screaming right now, that God, they would trust and believe in your sovereignty, that they would believe that you are in control no matter what their circumstances are screaming at them, that God, that they would be reminded in this moment that you are faithfully with them, that there's not a day that you have left them, no matter what, the lows look like you'll work it into good. You're using it for good. You're doing more in the unseen than you are in the seen. God, and I pray that they would know that your grace is always on their lives. That that's the very thing that you sent your son to die for on the cross. That it's not about our efforts, but God, your grace 
is always on us despite our circumstances. And I pray for every person that hasn't made a step of faith to know you, that God, they might have been listening to the sound of my voice this morning, to the truth of your word, and that God, they might begin to believe that uh, being a Christian isn't about what we can see before us, but actually it's about faith. It's about believing that you are in control, you are faithful and you are gracious despite it all. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, church. I really hope and pray that you have been encouraged this morning and I'll hand back over to our hosts. That was a great message, Tina. Thank you so much for yeah. sharing your heart. All around gardening, I know uh, I know you love gardening, don't you? Gardening is, is one of Susie's passions. It's Good not mine. I do not have green fingers. But I love that image that Tina shared with us this morning about our garden and the fact that God wants to walk with us like yeah. he did with Adam in that intimate relationship in the garden. He wants that to be the sort of relationship he has with us. Yeah. And we should not attach his love, his grace, his mercy, his sovereignty to what's happening to us in our yeah. world. God loves us despite what's happening to us. And that's why that verse I read at the beginning of the service is so powerful, that while we were still sinners, God showed his love and Christ died for yeah. us. So we don't look at our circumstances and attach how God feels to those circumstances. We look in the word and we say, God loves us. His love for us is so constant. And if you want to respond to that this morning, we would love to pray with you. God sent Jesus to die for you. And uh, you can respond on our website. If you go to our online services, people are waiting there now to pray with you. Or you can drop us an email to pray at kingschurchlife.com and we will respond to you in the next couple of days. But we'd love to see, uh, walk with you in these first few steps of your new journey. Yeah. And if you're making that decision today, well done. Yeah. We're so proud of you and so excited you're chosen to do that. Yeah, we hope you have a great week today. We've had a brilliant service, haven't we, this morning. Um, this week, um, we're coming to the end of August. Who knew it would come so fast? But we're coming to the end of August, and that means in a few weeks' time in September, our programmes will be ramping up again as people come back from holiday and things like that. So we've got a lot to look forward to. But in the meantime, if you find yourself at home, uh, maybe with a bit more time on your hands than normal, use that time to walk with God. There's, we can always do that. It doesn't matter what the restrictions how many people are around us, what we can and can't do according to what the government say. We can always walk with God. We can always get to know Jesus better. So just really encourage you to do that this week and we will see you all soon. Have a fantastic week, Kings. Goodbye, we'll see you soon. See you, bye.